Praise God. We thank you for your support. I want to encourage you, if you haven't joined the YouTube channel, please do so. Praise God. You can help us expand the gospel around the world. And uh, it's important that you join. When you help our numbers uh, increase by joining, not only do you get the word of God, you provide the word of God for other people. So um, we thank you for your emails and your support. Uh, we want you to get with us located right here at 1801 Deep River Road. Get in the live service Sunday morning, praise God. But, of course, if you can't be here at 11 a.m. for the live service, live streaming is the next best thing. So let's get right into the word of God. Those of you that have your Bibles, I want you to turn with me to Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. And I want to teach this evening from the subject, the protective shield of faith, the protective shield of faith. You know, uh, as long as you're in the body of Christ, we're going to have to hear messages on faith, all messages produce faith because faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But we're in spiritual warfare and we need to understand when we talk about the full arm of God that the shield of faith is a very, very important part of that armor. So I want you to look with me at Ephesians chapter 6. Let's start with verse 10 and 11. Paul says, finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole arm of God that you might be able to stand against the wiles or the deceits, the strategies of the devil. So Paul has preached in the first, second, third, fourth chapter, fifth chapter. Now he's bringing the finality to his message and he's talking about spiritual warfare. And he's talking to the church at Ephesus or the body of Christ. And he said, finally, brother, after you've done all of those things in the fifth chapter, the fourth chapter, he says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole arm of God that you might be able to stand against the wiles, the strategies, the deceits of the devil. Now, if you look at this in the Amplified, it says this. In conclusion, <coughs> excuse me, be strong in the Lord. Be in power through your union with him. That's so very important. Be in power through your union with him. In other words, you've got to be reading the word of God. You've got to have a prayer life. It's so important. Fellowship with God is how we become strong. Be empowered through your union with him. Draw your strength from him. That strength which his boundless might provides. Put on the whole armor Put on the whole armor, the armor of a heavy armed soldier, which God supplies that you might be able to successfully stand against all the strategies and the deceits of the devil. Notice he says, put on the whole arm of God. We draw our strength from him. In other words, if you're going to fight in a battle, if you're in warfare, and we are, we're in spiritual warfare. Just look around you. Just turn on your television. Pick up the paper. Praise God. It's... I mean, there's wars and rumors of wars, earthquakes in diverse places. And now is the time that we might be equipped. And God says that we need to draw our strength from him. If you're going to be in a battle, you got to be strong. That's what boot camp training is all about. Praise God. Developing muscles, developing endurance. So that when you get in the real thing, he said, you might be able to stand against the wiles, the strategies, the deceits of the devil. Satan is not just shooting shots here and there. He study our lives. And he wants how we react to. He wants how we react to certain things. Whether you have a short temper, a bad temper. Whether you are uh, uh, more geared toward tempting when it comes to, you know, cigarettes or drugs or alcohol or whatever. Uh, pornography. He watches the things that draws our attention. And then he's not going to come against you with just anything. It's a strategy. And so we've got to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And the way we begin be strong in the Lord is get in the word of God. We've got to draw our strength from him. He says, draw your strength from him that you might stand against all the strategies of the devil. Now notice he says, put on the whole arm of God, which God supplies. Now when you join uh, the army, no man go to war at his own expense. They're going to give you the gun. 
They're going to give you your fatigue. They're going to suit. They're going to give you your boots. They're going to give you M16 rifle. They're going to give you all their supply, but they're not going to put it in your hand and dress you up. God has given us the word of God. He's given us the name of Jesus. He's given us the blood of the Lamb. God, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God for the pulling down of Satan's strongholds. God will supply everything it takes for you and I to be successful in our homes, in our marriage, in our church, spirit, soul, and body. But you've got to dress yourself up. You can't be lazy, praise God. That's one thing uh, about any soldier You've got, you cannot be lazy. You're going to rise 5, 6 in the morning and do 10 miles before the sun even come up. And we've got to be, praise God, diligent in the things of God. Why? We're in spiritual warfare. So he talks about the strategies that the devil used against us. Now, if you'll drop down to verse 16 and 17, he begins to talk about part of that armor. And in verse 16, this is what he says concerning that armor. He says, and take unto you, watch this, above all, that's what I want you to see, above all, there's a preference, there's an emphasis, above all. In other words, he talked about the shoes shot with the preparation gospel of peace. He talked about all these other things, and then he, he ends up and he says, above all, priority, taking the shield of faith, where which you may be able to quench, not some, not many, but all the, here's the key word, fiery darts. That's a tactic of warfare. Fiery darts of the wicked. And then he goes on, we'll come back to that in a minute, and says, take unto you the helmet of salvation. You got to protect your head. Praise God. Casting down thoughts and imagination. Satan always, when you cut off a man's head, if you're going to kill a snake, cut off his head. So you got to protect your head. In football, everybody knows this and most other sports. He says, and take unto you the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. The sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. You need to know the word of God. Draw your strength from the word of God. Take with you the word of God. Amen. It's the sword of the spirit. Now, these are things that God supplies. But if you back up again, we're talking about the protective shield of faith. He said, above all, though, you got the word of God, but make sure you take the shield of faith wherewith we should be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Fiery darts. Now, in the days of, you know, when the Roman Empire, their warfare was totally different. They didn't have nuclear weapons and, and tanks and, 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 you know, um, assault rifles. But there was a tactic of warfare about the fiery dark where they would take an arrow and they would drench the top of that arrow into a flammable fluid until it was soaked. And then one of the tactics is that they would all take the arrow, put it in the bow, and shoot it. And when the arrow would hit what it was a we, in this case, whether it was a house or whether it was a, 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 a wall or what it was, it wasn't just the arrow. It was the fire that caused the destruction. That was a war tactic. And the shield of faith was made of wood, strong wood. And what they would do because they knew that was a war tactic, they would drench their shields in water, soak them in water, soak them in water, what, what do water represent? The word of God, the water of the word. And so when that arrow would hit that shield, it was not only to protect them, the arrow from penetrating them, but put out the fire because it's the fire is what did the damage. And that's what, uh, you know, we see today. I mean, uh, a modern updated version of this would be missiles. It's not so much... Once the missile hit, yeah, it brings destruction. It's the fire that it caused. Now buildings on fire. The whole city's on fire. Oh, you know, gas lines explode. Everything, it's the fire. And so Satan is shooting fiery darts. And he says that we need the shield of faith, the shield of the word of God. That's what, how you're going to quench the fiery darts is with the word of God because that shield was drenched in water, and it would put it out. Now, we need to understand, too, that, you know, in the days of, you know, Spartacus and 
300, all these Roman movies. That shield wasn't just some little something that was about maybe three feet tall. The shield almost covered your whole body. And what they would do, another tactic doing warfare is when they would shoot the fiery darts, they would all get in a circle and hook their shields together. And when all of the arrows would be released with the fire on it, it would not only stop the penetration, it would put out the fire. And then they would move forward and attack. So we need the word of God. Now, when it comes to fiery darts, we're going to get into this. I don't want to get ahead of myself. The fire that the devil used is really the tongue. James says the tongue is a fire. You know, sometimes you can be just having a great day, doing fine, and someone say something or criticize you, allow you, and all of, a fiery dart has been shot at you. Or someone did so, or a fiery dart could be, you know, a bad report from the doctor. It's not the arrow, it's the continual fire. The fire represents thinking about it, thinking about it, thinking about it. Now the fire, it, it'll start a fire in you. In other words, you got to cast that thought down. You got to arrest that thought. You can't let that thing begin to burn in you. Fear begin to burn in you. What the doctor said begin to burn in you. The arrow has been shot. Praise God. But it takes the word of God to quench the fire, casting down thoughts and imaginations. We're in warfare. And the Bible talks about casting down thoughts and imaginations, the weapons of our warfare. And bring it into captivity, every thought. So this is what a battlefield is in the mind. It's not just what people say. It's not just what the devil do. It's not just the fear, fiery darts and fearful thoughts he brings. It's when they begin to burden you. And the only way you can quench them is with the word of God. So here he says, and take unto you the whole arm of God. We're going to have to get in the word. We're going to have to draw our strength from him. We're going to have to be prepared because we're in spiritual warfare and the devil is shooting fire at us. There's always something that he's aimed at us. There's always a, a strategy that he's planning against us, but no weapon form will prosper. And the shield of faith is the shield of the word of God. Let's call it what it is. I don't want you to get too mechanical either. Even though in the uh, Old Testament, or when they was in wartime, it was a natural shield. The word of God, the shield of faith, faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So the shield of the word of God, lift up the word of God. Lift up the scripture. Every time the enemy comes, praise God, with a, a temptation, with a trial or test, do what Jesus said, it is written. He lift up the shield of faith. He lift up the word of God. Man should not live by bread alone but by every word that has come out of the mouth of God. And every temptation, it is written. What is he doing? He's lifting up the shield of faith, and Satan could not penetrate his life. He couldn't get him to turn stones into bread. He couldn't get him to bow down and worship him because he kept coming with the word of God or the shield of faith. And eventually, the Bible says, the devil leaveth him. He will leave you too. Praise God. He'll leave you. He'll leave your family alone. Praise God. And one thing about this shield of faith, why it's a protective shield of faith, not only does it cover you, it can cover your family. It can cover your children. You can, you know, your kid can be somewhere down in Atlanta. Your kid can be somewhere, you know, in, in Texas and whatever, in college. And, and, and all of a sudden you sense that, you know, they're going through something. You can praise God, get into prayer and begin to speak the word of God. So I bind you. Concerning my daughter, in the name of Jesus, concerning my son, no weapon for him, and that shield can cover them. That's why it's so important. Not only does, does it cover and protect you, it covers your family. It's a covering. It's a protective shield. Faith, praise God, is not limited to time nor distance. Faith can go to New York. Faith can go to Atlanta. Faith can go to Tennessee. Faith can go. It's called the shield of faith. It's the word of God. You remember uh, the centurion who understood authority and faith? Praise God. And when Jesus came and uh, his servant was sick and he said, I will come and heal him. He said, no, you're not worthy. I'm not worthy that I should come under my roof. Only speak the word 
and my servant shall be healed. And Jesus said, oh, my God, I haven't heard of such great faith that not of all Israel. And the reason he understood this shield of faith is because he said, I'm a man under authority. I understand authority. I say to one man, go, and he go. I say to another man, come, and he come. In other words, he was saying, Jesus, I've watched your words. I've watched you use your faith. You released faith one day and spoke to a fig tree. And 24 hours later, it was withered. I want you to use your faith. I saw you going across a lake one day and a, and a storm arose and you spoke to the wind and wave because your disciples was in trouble and even the wind and waves obeyed you. Why, God? It protected them. The Bible says the wind and waves ceased. I even want you to raise up Lazarus from the dead. Speak words. Lazarus, come forth. And, and the man came forth bound in grain clothes. And so, notice faith will go. It'll travel. Faith will cover you. It can cover your family. I cover this church in faith. I can't be everywhere in everybody's house, every member's house, but I release my shield of faith. Not only is this shield for me, my family, my finances, I use my faith for the whole body of Christ. As I begin to intercede and bind and plead the blood over the households of this ministry, just like Moses did, in the Old Testament, which was a type and shadow of Jesus. If, when the deaf angel came, the Bible says he put the blood on the door pole. He covered him in blood. There was a protective shield. And even though there was terror and crying and weeping all throughout Israel, the Bible says there was light in Goshen. Or there was no destruction because the blood covered them. And so, thank God for the shield of faith. Amen. Now, that's why we got to keep our faith strong. Don't wait until you get sick, you've been diagnosed with some type of sickness and disease to start building your faith in healing scriptures. Don't wait until you got some devastating bill that is about to destroy you and lack is everywhere until you start building your faith in financial scriptures. That's not the time. You keep that shield strong all the time because it's called the protective shield of faith. That's what happened to Job. As long as he had a hedge about him, his faith was up, the devil couldn't touch his house. It couldn't touch his children, couldn't touch his cattle, couldn't touch his body. But then Job got in fear. He began to drop. He got, went from faith to fear, and he let down his guard. And he said, the thing I feared the most has come upon me. So that's what the enemy does. He used fear. He used adversity. He used fiery darts. But thank God we can quit them all with the word. Of God, So it's called the protective shield of faith. Your union then, if you're going to be strong, your union or connection with God and his word is vital to win in warfare. And we are in warfare. Satan knows he has but a short time. His days are numbered and he's gone forward with great wrath. And he's come to kill, steal, and to destroy deception. He's come against young people, the church, the body of Christ. And he talked about principalities and powers, rulers of the darkness, wicked spirits in heavenly places. We're not wrestling with flesh and blood. Don't get misdirected and think that people are your enemy. Now, I'm mad at so-and-so, and I'm going to get so-and-so and revenge the so-and-so. Well, you're already losing the battle. We're not wrestling with flesh and blood. Now, don't get me wrong, the devil will use flesh and blood, but you got to look behind the wind and see the enemy and see that spirit and bind the spirit. Praise God. And so we got to be strong in the Lord. You've got to have union. There's got to be fellowship time with God. So look here in St. John 15, 5. I am the vine, ye are the branches. Whosoever live in me, it's just a lifestyle. And I in him bear as much abundant fruit. However, apart from me, see, notice he said, be strong in your union, in the Lord. Draw your strength from him, from the word. There's got to be fellowship time. There's got to be word time. He said, apart from me, cut off from vital union with me, you can't do nothing. That's where I draw my strength from, to preach, to teach. It's not that adversity does not come. It's not that Satan does not shoot fiery darts at me. He's been doing it ever since I've been in the ministry. 
How are you going to get the money for this? How are you going to build a church? Where are you going to get land to build? Blah, blah, blah. Where are you going to get money to buy the cameras? How are you going to do it? He shoots it at me in the ministry. He shoots it through my family. Through personally. He come against uh, my, my, my family, my son, my wife with sickness, and disease, and adversity. Well, I, I lift up the shield. I can't wait. That ain't the time to run and go, I need to get in the Bible. I need to draw my strength from union with him. Without him, I can't do nothing. I can't preach. I can't teach. So I keep myself built up. Why? In warfare, you've got to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Praise God. So the shield of faith, I want you to get this. When we talk about the shield of faith, <laughs> I want you to think about it as God because God's, God and his word are one. The shield of faith, God, the shield of faith will quench all the fiery darts of Satan. Now, this is what I want you to begin to see. That when you lift up your faith, it's not just your faith. Thank God. It's the faith of God also. That's God's word. It brings God's word on the scene. That's begin to cover you. Cover your children. Praise God. In other words, God is going to honor his word. God is going to back his word. If he said it, he's going to do it. If he spoke it, he's going to bring it to pass. So when you lift up the word of God or the word of faith, the shield of faith, then God comes on the scene. And now it's a matter of God becomes your protective. That's why I wanted you to see, I'm calling this the protective shield of faith. If you look at Genesis 15, 1, Abraham, he understood this. He says that, he told Abraham, I'll bless thee, and thou shalt be a blessing. But he said, I'll also be your protection. I'll bless those that bless you, but curse those that curse you. You ain't got to worry about you. You ain't got to worry about, all you got to do is serve me. Stay in faith. That's why Abraham was called the father of faith. So after these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision saying, fear not, Abram, for I am your capital S shield. I am your shield. When you start my mouth about lifting up the shield of faith, you're talking about bringing God himself on the scene. Amen. God stands up. God begins to rebuke the devourer for your sake. God begins to stand against the enemy. God comes on the scene. He said, I am your shield. So this is not just talking about, well, you know, no, that's God's word. And God says, whatever I said, I become your shield over your finances, over your children. So don't fear your abundant compensation and your reward shall be exceedingly great. Let me tell you something. Thank God for jobs and in the natural. And, not, you know, I worked at Hatteras Yacht Company for about eight, nine years before I went into the ministry, I worked at other places. And Harris was usually my, was really my best job. And I thought they could compensate me. And they had some nice benefits. They paid good wages and back at that time. And, you know, they had great benefits, dental, hospital. But let me tell you, can't nobody compensate you like God. He said, I'm your shield. I don't want you trusting in nobody, no one. No one can compensate you. I am your shield and your exceeding great reward. Praise God. So the main thing is God said, fear not. I don't know what dart is being, being shot at you. Maybe a negative doctor's report. Maybe it's, you know, your child is on drugs and the enemy is whispering in your ear. See, remember, it's not just the arrow. It's the voice in your head that fire. That's the fire. You've had people say stuff to you, and I know we all been this. You were doing fine, and something happened, and that thing begins to. It's like it begins to burn in you. <laughs> the thought of it, it just keeps like a like a treadmill, and you gotta you gotta put that thing out. That's why you gotta open up your mouth and speak the word of God because your mind always has to shut up and listen to what your mouth has to say. When you're hearing, oh, you know, that thing might be malignant now. You know, so-and-so died with that. And, these, and you know, you know it's the enemy shooting that, that fire. The fire is trying to open up your mouth. No, by strikes him here. No, 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 no. With long life, he satisfied me and, set, and, and showed me salvation. No, no, no. No evil shall befall my children. No plague will come down where they're doing. Because the devil is constant. That's how you put the fire out. By the word of God. That's the shield of faith. And God says, hey, I am 
your compensation. I am your exceeding great reward and I am your shield. So I want you to realize when you begin to speak God's word and lift up the covering shield of faith, it brings God on the scene. I don't know if we ever, uh, did we even, let's, let's, let's read that. I don't think we read it from the Amplified. And if we did, it ain't going to hurt. Let's, let's read it again because I want you to get that covering part. In verse 16 and 17, it says, and lift up over all, see, the covering shield of faith. It wasn't just some little shield. That word, it covers you. It covers your family. That God is your shield. He says the covering shield of faith so that you can quench all the flaming missiles of the wicked one and take the helmet of salvation and sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So he says the lift up the covering shield of faith. And so that's very important because when I bring the word on the scene, when I begin to lift up the word of God and stand against the enemy and resist him, God says, I am your shield. I become, I become your shield. It's just like the tithes and the offerings while we make that confession on Sunday morning. God says, when you bring the tithes and offerings into the storehouse, prove me now and put me to the test. And then he said, and see, won't I rebuke the divide for your sake. See, all of a sudden, the tithe, it brings you under the umbrella of God's protection. It's not about you now. God says, okay, now that you've honored me and with that tent, I'm going to rebuke sickness. I'm going to cover your family. I'm going to take care of your children. I'm going to make sure that they are safe at school. It brings God on the scene. It brings you under a covering of the, like an umbrella of, of God's faith. God himself becomes your shield. Praise God. All right, so then remember, it's not the arrow, but it's the fire that destroys. There are people been shot with arrows and pull them out and survive, but it's that fire. It's when the fire, if that fire is not put out, that's what brings the destruction. I mean, you can shoot an arrow, it can hit a house, it's particularly those straw houses that they were using. I've seen them destroy whole cities in that day, those that were made of straw and hay, that's all they would do. They would just release the And it wasn't the arrow. It was the fire. And it would begin to that house in less than some two to three minutes. The whole house would come down because of the fire was not quenched. Now let's go to James chapter 3. James chapter 3. In James chapter 3, Look at verse 5 and 6. James 3, verse 5 and 6. Even so the tongue is a little member and boasts at great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindle it. Notice he's calling the tongue a fire because I want to show you. Now I want to just, I don't want you to get so much into the physical component of the arrow but what does the biblical what does that arrow biblically represent what does that fire biblically represents it's the tongue he said the tongue is a fire he says how great a matter a little fire kindle it how great a matter a little fire kindle that's what I'm talking about when the devil used words he used tongue and I'll show you that the Bible says that's all he's got He'll bring circumstances, situation, did he go to the line? He says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue thou shalt condemn. Every lying tongue. You ain't going to make it this time. You're going to die with sickness and disease. You're going to get on that plane and it's going to go down. That's a, that he's trying to get a fire in you. You'll never be able to pay your house off. You'll never get out of debt. All he can do is bring the lie. He uses tongue. He'll take circumstance and they'll speak to you. And, and here he says what he's trying to do, he's trying to start a fire. The arrow has been released, which is the lie. How great a matter, a little fire kindle it. I don't know about you, but if you ever look out in 
California, and, which they just have forest fires all the time sitting like out there. And they begin to show you all the destruction. There was over 180 acres, 180,000 acres of land, property, uh, this and that. I mean, we see fires all the time. Sometimes they destroy a home. And nobody, we, we, we see the great fire, but no one can find the little cigarette bud that started it, the kindling. It started by someone just being irresponsible. A little bud just, well, went out. It wasn't all the way out. It just got on a little blade, a little piece of straw. But that burned some other straw. And that straw caught onto a twig. And that twig caught onto a little bramble bush. And that bramble bush caught onto another bush. And that other bush there caught onto this first tree. And that tree caught onto the And for you know it. The kindling. The devil can't just start a fire. The tongue is the kindling. And so the weapons that he used against us is a lying tongue. You'll never make it. He's trying to start and fire you. What, 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 what happened if you, you know, you, your kid is in school? What, what, you know, what if they have, you know, it's been drive by shooters, you know, it's been locked down. Hey, trying to get you to fear, to start a fire in you. But he can't start the fire without a kindling. I mean, I used to, you know, uh, I don't burn fires now. <laughs> I have simulated fireplace, but I remember the first fireplace I had. You know, you can't take no big old log and get a match and put it in that thing and, and start burning, waiting on, on the fire to start. That ain't going to happen. You got to get some kindling, man. You got to get some small twigs first and get that going and maybe get you, you know, another little big, little bigger branch and get that going. And, and that's called kindling fire. And then when you get that going and get a little bigger branch and some more things, you can even put some, you know, uh, whether it's kerosene or some a fluid to help, it, whatever, it burns. But once you get the going, then you put the log on there. Now you, now you got a fire. But you can't start a fire without kindling. Satan is always trying to start a fire in our life with words and accusations. And what if this happened? And, what, and, and when the thought comes, that's an arrow. He said, take the shield of faith and quench the fiery darts. How do you put it out? With the word of God. Don't give him the kindling. Don't give him the kindling, which is fear. And, and you begin to let that thing burn in you. And, and now you can't sleep. And it doesn't disturb your rest. And you worry about your kid. And you worry about what somebody else said. And you worry about what the boss man said. You know, you come in here tomorrow. Late, one more time, I'm going to fire you. You're mad. And he says something cursed at you. It's still going. And you need to get Now the kindling going. The fire is building. You ain't even that job. You just talking about, you know what I tell you. I mean, I mean you know, you go down there. And you keep it. You better put that fire out because you've been hurt somewhere. You go in there and cuss, start throwing stuff all over. That's what the devil wants you to do. And no one can see all they saw. You got mad. Broke the computers. Cussed the boss man out. They had to come get you security. But it started way back there with one thought. But you let the, the fire keep burning. Now, that's an extreme case. But I'm trying to show you Satan just can't bring start a fire. He can't bring sickness and cancer in your life. It starts with a thought. Oh, what if you got this? What, and you keep meditating on that thought. Man, that's the fire. That's the fire. And all he can do is lie. You got the word of God. Put it out. Hold up the shield of faith. Start quoting the healing scripture. No, but you keep talking and, talk, and just this and that. And you know what well, that is, right? Because, you know, my, my mama and them had the same thing. And my cousin, that, see, the fire is burning. Now, he wants your tongue. He wants you to begin to say it. Take no thought saying, what if it is cancer? What if it is malignant? Well, he wants you to say it. He needs your words. He can't start a fire. He don't have the power. The power of life and death is in your tongue. So you got to lift up this shield of faith. Don't speak how you feel. Speak what the word of God says. Because we all wait, oh, my head is killing. My toes get, I don't know what's going on. Seems like my leg is swollen up. I don't know if this thing is a guy. I, don't say it. Don't give the devil the kindling. I ain't going to never be able to get out there. It seems like I pay all one thing, and then and it's just something else come, and Lord have mercy, just something I pay, get the refrigerator fixed, and now the washing machine, bro. Man, see, don't give them the kindling. That's why, have you ever noticed when, you're not feeling good, how it's pressure on your tongue, you won't tell somebody. 
Man, what's wrong with you? Man, what's wrong with me? Boy, let me tell you. I woke up this morning, my head was killing me. And then when I got there, I had a tip. You give him the kindling. Watch out. Lift up the shield of faith. Because he can't start a fire without the kindling. So when it talks about quench all fiery dot, I want you to understand Satan is trying to put pressure on your tongue. He's trying to put pressure on your words. He's trying to get you to change your confession of faith about your, your debt cancellation, your household salvation, and what God has promised you. You know, oh, boy, that boy, I don't know. Much as I've seen like he get worse and worse, I don't know, he going to bust hell. No, don't give him the kindling. Take no thought saying, Matthew 6, 31, the thought can come, but don't say it. Don't give him the kindling. That's Satan trying to get your permission from your tongue. I never would say that we would never build this church and have the money. I don't care. There was time. That was a thing. I'm like, where in the world? I don't think people understand until they've been in my shoe. They see it all now, but they got to realize I'm just an ordinary guy like everybody else. I didn't have no big ministry back in me. There were millions of dollars I had to blame. And it was a temptation to get up many times in this pulpit and say, man, look, y'all, weak, but I wouldn't say it. I would not give the devil the kindling. I would only say, I would lift up the shield of faith. We still owe no man nothing but the love. We are debt-free ministry, praise God. We are held fast to my confession of faith, regardless of how I felt. What you feel does not establish a thing, but what you say does. In the mouth of two or three witnesses, 2 Corinthians 13, 1, let every word be established. That's why the devil knows he's after your tongue. And then the next verse, I know I spent a lot of time on that. Look what he says. It confirms what I'm saying. The tongue is a fire. That's the fiery dart. He's shooting at you. A world of iniquity. Among God with members that it defiles the whole body. You begin to break down your own health. My God, I tell you, it just seemed like every, every winter, I, I did that same flu and, uh, and then seen the summertime. Man, I, my allergies, now you claiming that, you're breaking down your body. You're giving the devil the kill. Lift up the shield of faith. That boy is just so bad, I tell you, I don't know what I'm going to do. He's about to drive me crazy. Well, now he's, you're talking about you're crazy. Lift up the shield of faith. Don't give them the kindling. You're messing with your own hell. You're messing with your own body now. And there's a twofold revelation. Not only does it defile your body, it begins to defile the body of Christ. So what the devil tries to get you to do is set a fire on other people. Like, I can't stand so-and-so. I hope they die. I hope they lose everything they got. There you go. Now you're shooting fire at other people. Satan just can't destroy you or no one else around you. Notice it says it fouls the whole body and set on fire the course of nature, and it is set on by hell itself. Hell is after your tongue. If Satan had so much power to kill you, he would need your tongue. Power, life, and essence is in your tongue. Don't lend, don't set in motion the course of nature or the will of nature. Y'all heard me teach about this. You've heard me teach about Red Fox for years. On Sanford and Son, the big one, the big one, the big one. Oh, and we would laugh, we would laugh. No one realized the kind of hit set in motion something. Now, after about five, ten years of that show, guess what got him? The big one, heart attack. But no one never connected that with the words he was speaking way back there. That's why when you first say something negative, it just don't come on you. If you, if you said, man, my head killing me, but it seemed like the top of my head about to blow off and your head went off, and everybody said, I ain't going to say that. No, but what you do, you get the kindling going. You get the kindling. Man, my head, Timmy, man, my head, I tell you, I shoot, man, my head. And then nine, ten years later, you have aneurysm of the brain, but no one, because in church, you were talking faith. In church, you were standing up testifying. You were singing on the choir, but in the darkness of your back room in pain, you were saying all type of negative stuff. Satan needs the kindling. And that's what the shield of faith, faith will quench all fiery darts. I just kept saying, this is a debt-free ministry. This is a debt-free ministry. Matter of fact, I got the world. I didn't even want to visualize. I knew we owe. I knew we were stealing, you know, and, and I got the where I told 
uh, you know, our financial secretary, when you give me a report, just put zero down there. I, I know we still owe how, how many million dollars. I know that, but I won't see it. Out of sight, out of mind. I'm walking by faith and not by sight. And there came a day that that zero became a reality. Because I would not give the devil the kindling, even though stuff was breaking all around. And even now, you know, there are people, we don't talk about it, but I don't mind talking about, you know, we, it's been 20 years we're in the ministry, and thank God it is paid for, because now, you know, those big air-conditioned units all around the church seem like every last one of them don't go out. And when those boys go out, he ain't talking about no, 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 $500, $600. We're talking about over $100,000. But guess what? The money is there. You know why? I would never give the devil the kindling. I'm not going to let him start a fire. So how do you stop the fire? Taking the shield of fame, the word of God. Make sure your life is full of the word. Let it come out of your mouth and quench that fiery dart. Don't give the devil the kindling to anything. Your children... Your finances, your own body. Hallelujah. Let the weak say I'm strong. I don't care how weak I feel. I'm going to say I'm strong because I'm not going to give the devil the kingdom. And so we look here. Satan then uses the tongue to shoot fiery darts. But God's word will quench them. Get it? Because I... I know we started off in the natural and giving natural example about the shield and that, but in the spirit, you need to know what that fiery dog is. It's a tongue. It's the lives of the enemy. He'll, he'll shoot them at you, your family, your finance, everything God has promised you. You'll never get out of debt. <coughs> your children never get say, look at it. All those lies, those are, now remember, those are, those are lies. Those are, the, those are the arrows, but they got fire on the fire. It's not just the arrow. But it's you, if you're going to let those thoughts burn in you, he's trying to get the kindling in you. Ephesians 5, 25 and 26 says this. It says, husband, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it that he might sanctify and cleanse it by the washing of water by the word. Hold that there. By the washing of water by the word. By the washing of the water by the word. By the washing. How do you put out fire? With water. That's the most natural thing. That's the number one weapon when there's a, a building on fire or, or, or businesses on fire. The fire truck, the fire truck coming, the number one thing they use is water. The water we use is the word of God. He said that you might sanctify and cleanse it. Now, I want, you know, I'm, I'm going to use that. He said, husband, love your wife, even as Christ loved the church, that he might sanctify and cleanse it by the washing of water of the word. I, I want to use that in this context. That's how you cleanse your wife is by the words you speak. You can say the wrong thing and start a fire. Any man that's been married in time know that. Watch what you say because you can start a fire. Your words can either cleanse her, refresh her, <laughs> your words can stir up some fire. And sometimes you don't even know the fire done started because you don't know what you said. What's wrong with you? Nah. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, you know something wrong. But my wife one time, man, I'm like, oh my God, in the early days of the ministry, what is wrong with her? You okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's like a fire done started. And you, you be thinking, that. what I do, I'm like, what did I do? Then three days later, you didn't put no mustard on my sandwich. Lord, help me. The devil, here I am about ready to explode, tear up the whole house, and you talking about mustard on the sandwich. Sun started burning in me, you know? And vice versa, you women. Don't laugh because y'all can do the same thing. You started firing your husband by saying the wrong thing. And sometimes it's not what you say, sometimes it's a lack of what you don't say. You didn't say thank you for paying the bills. You didn't say thank you for, for cleaning up. You didn't say thank you for washing my car. Sometimes we just, men need affirmation. They just want another, I mean, we're secure, but you know, we ain't going to get that on our job when you begin to notice the little things we do. 
oh, the flowers look good, or so-and-so look good, or you look, even you look good in your suit. I know women like to hear that too. But men like to be affirmed too. Praise God. So words can either start a fire or they can cleanse one another. If we speak the word of God over one another, that's why I say husband love your wives and then tell your wives uh, reverence your husband, respect him, venerate. What words? Praise God. When I preach good, I don't care what woman or man tell me I preach good. Nothing minister more to me when my wife said that was a good message. She's washing me. I'm like, my God, I've been affirmed. Praise God. Oh, she started a fire. You just preached too long. Just seemed like, didn't you see everybody were getting up, leaving? Well, well, no. there it is. Words, can he, come on, I'm just telling you the truth because that's what it's talking about. Words. And Satan is using words. You got to lift up your shield of faith. Sometimes the shield of faith just don't say nothing. It's just so you just have to struggle off and you lift up the shield. Just take that dart. Mm, criticizing, just take the dart. And just take the dot. Sometimes you need to walk out the door. You might have dots in your back, but thank God. You... Praise God. Proverbs 15, verse 1 says, it says, uh, grievous words that uh, 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 <laughs> stir up anger. That's what it says. Grievous words stir up anger. Anchor. And it talks about words. I really want to quote that. I want to say that exactly like, I'm going to even look that one up because I'm hearing it. I want to say Proverbs 15 1 says this A soft answer turneth away wrath, water, but grievous words stir up anger. It's not always what you say, it's the tone in which you say it, it's the tone in which you act. We ain't gonna take the garbage out. See, now, all right, that's a fire. And I gotta, I just dig my shield of faith. Just, come on. You can do her the same way. You can say the wrong thing. You can criticize that. Well, oh my God, you, uh, you got your hair fixed today? You can't tell? Oh, God, you done started a real blood fire now. <sighs> mm, that's okay. You ain't gonna say that. I cook your food, it's in there on the fire. So I want you to see, now Now we're laughing, but really these are little things that the enemy use. A house divided against itself. And we got to understand that if we, our, our shield of faith need to go up around our house more than anywhere else. Because that's where he's going to try to start a fire. Between you and your kids. I can use the same thing. And I'm, I'm just going by the Holy Ghost now because it says, it says, fathers, provoke not your children to anger. It's okay to correct them, but you can, you know, don't wait until you about to blow your stock and then, boom, I'm tired of it. You know, I remember I did that one time. Satan, son, in front of me, my, my kids, just slowly get you know, our kids. I, daddy, daddy, daddy. And I was frustrated. I was going through a lot of stuff. I had bills and I wasn't feeling good. And, and it was, it was Tory. And he was just in the grocery store. I want this and I want that. I was, Boy, I said, will you just stop and get you? And, and, and I did, it's how I said it. And it just caused him to shrink. And I realized I provoked him to anger because I was the one angry. It wasn't what I said was the tone that I used. And I kept going. Now, now the devil is saying, see, your daddy don't love you. She's fire. He's trying to end the kid, trying to separate me from my son. And the Holy Ghost, when I got around to the next one, said, you, you, boy, you go back and you repent to him. I'm telling you, these are little lessons I Repent. God said, yep, you hollered at him in front of everybody. Now go around there and tell him you're sorry. And I got on my knees and went back around there and I said, look, I mean, uh, 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 Tori, you can have whatever you want, what you want. Daddy's sorry. I didn't, I shouldn't holler. What am I doing? I put out the fire with words, the washing the water away. So I, this is not even going nowhere alike, but I think it's, it's good because none of this was planned, what I'm teaching on right now. It's not in my notes. It's just the Holy Ghost trying to show us how the devil will try to use our own words to destroy us in our own tongue to break down our relationships, whether it's your children, whether it's your husband or wife and family. We've got to be conscious of the words that we speak. That they are, It's the word of God. Lift up the shield of faith to put out fires and don't give Satan to kindling. Amen? Praise God. So, 
Uh, I showed you Ephesians 5. Let me show you Isaiah 54, 17 because we've quoted that wrong. We, we've, we, let me show you how we quoted it wrong. No weapon formed against you shall prosper and every tongue that rises against you in judgment, thou shalt condemn every tongue there. He didn't say God would condemn it. He said you condemn it. Satan, that's a weapon. That's a weapon. That's, that's one of his weapons. He's shooting a fiery dart. What are you going to do if you don't get the money? What if they find out that that thing is malignant? He's shooting a tongue. It's a thought. It's a word. Don't sit there and say, oh, no, I condemn that. No, I condemn that. Speak the word of God. You condemn it. Well, what if your kid go out there and playing at the beach and they drown? I condemn that. The angels of God take charge over them. What you going to do if you don't have enough money? I condemn that. I'm a tie. So you speak the word of God. You condemn every tongue. Satan will try to come and put fear in y'all. He used the tongue as a weapon. That's the weapon he's talking about. But it won't prosper if you condemn it. Don't let the fire start. Quench it. How you going to gonna get out there and start building that building? And the grass going to grow up on them bricks and you going to go broke and you going to be in debt. You put your name down. For, I condemn that. God told me to build it. God's will is God's bill. He'll pay for the bill. I'm not going to sit there and let a fire of fear get in me. That's a weapon being formed against you. Casting down thoughts and imagine. That's what a war These thoughts of failure, thoughts of sickness, thoughts of death. Those are weapons. That's all the devil got. He said it won't fall, it won't prosper, but you got to condemn it. I'm not going to sit there and let the devil talk to me and lie to me and put a fire in me and fear in me with words. I'm going to condemn every lying tongue. Now, let me try to close this thing. Look at Luke 11. So a soft answer turned away wrath. And I've learned, I've learned, I've missed it because I know when you get loud, the other one get loud. Then they get loud because you're trying to talk over one another. Before you can calm somebody else, you got to calm yourself. And I learned that. I'm not going to give the devil a kill. Now, I, I, done, I done fell for that trap many times. But not anymore. I don't want the enemy in my house. Luke 11, 24 through 26 when an unclean spirit has gone forth, out of man he walketh through dry places seeking rest and findeth none. And said, I will return into my house. Look at how the devil thinks about you. He thinks he's still on you. <laughs> my house. From what's like, no, I've been bought with a price. I belong to the Lord. But I'm just trying to show you Satan's mentality. And really that word house is, a, is the Greek word household. If he can't get in you, he'll try to get in next, your children, the next generation. He says, <clears throat> from whence I come out, and when he cometh, he find it swept and garnished. And he go and he take with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and entered in and dwelt there, because the last state of that man is worse than the first. Look at this in the Amplified. It says, when a spirit goes forth out of our, anytime there's any deliverance. Now, I want you to go back to the Amplified. Verse. We didn't? Okay. Wow. Well, listen to this. I want y'all to listen to this. There's an amplified right here. Listen to the amplified version. <clears throat> I sure didn't, did I? And I should have. Listen, listen to the amplified version. He says, when a spirit is gone forth out of him, verse 24, it runs through. This is what I wanted you to see, and that's on me. Waterless places. Places void of the word of God. When you don't have no word in your heart, your word, that's what the spirit, the spirit can't go where the word because he can't start no fire. fire. Water puts fire out. And he says, when he going for, when you get delivered, when your children, in, he's, listen, he's still trying to come back into your house. He'll try to come in through you. He'll try to come in through word. He'll, any place void of water. He said, uh, 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 that spirit, he roams through waterless places in search of a place to rest and release uh, 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 release, re, uh, have refreshment and ease and find none and say I will go back into my house 
and he finds this swept and gone, and there was no word, no word, no word, no water, no water, fire can start. Fire starts in dry places. And so he's looking for a water place. Those spirit, when, when your home is full of the word of God, your heart is full of the word of God, your children are full of the word of God, your church is full. He like, man, you know what? I'm going to go and leave them folks the world like long because they, but when you just sitting there, second on television, don't get in the word, don't fellowship with God, don't build your spirit up, that's a waterless place. You become a prime target for demon spirits, praise God, to fat and say, look, man, there ain't been no word. They just said, no, all they do is watch tell them they ain't prayed up. And then to make sure that I, 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 I fortify myself, let me get seven more demons called this time. But when you follow the word of God, a fire can't start. He arrives and finds it swept and garnished and, and, and uh, 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 you know, there was no word. And so he's looking for, did we have verse 24? Now, water, that's what I want you to see. Okay, that's, that's good. He's going through, well, what do you mean water's paid? The water of the word. No word. No word in the home. No word in the church. No word in the choir. That's where the fire starts. So let me just throw that out there. Keep your heart filled with God's word. Fires start easily in dry places. Keep your spirit built up on the word of God. Fires start easily in dry places. I'm not even going to give those, use those scripture references. I know I'm coming down, probably got about five more minutes, I guess, two minutes. So let me just go right to Deuteronomy 33, 29. I want you to see this. I want to close with this. Keep your heart full of the word of God because Satan is looking for dry places, a dry church, a dry choir, no word, no union with God, no fellowship. Praise God, because water puts fires out. And in Deuteronomy 33, just one verse here, verse 29, it says this. It says, happy art thou, O Israel, who is like unto thee, O people, saved by the Lord, the shield of thy help, who is the reward of excellence, and thine enemies shall be found liars. Now, when it said, excuse me, who is the sword? It's talking about the word of God. Of excellence, and thine enemies shall be found liars under thee, and thou shalt tread upon them with high, all your high places. Look at this and amplified. Happy are you, O Israel. The blessing is yours, who is like unto the people saved by the Lord. That's you and I. The shield of your help. Notice he's called in Lord. He is your shield. The sword, capital S, the word of God, he is your sword, shall exalt thee. And your enemies shall come fawning and cringing and submit, feign obedience to you. And you shall march upon their high places. In other words, they'll become your footstool. So I want to leave this last statement with you. The shield of faith, which is God and his word, is God himself surrounding you and protecting you. That's why the shield of faith is so important. It's God himself. I want to give you these last few scriptures. So the shield of faith, when you look, it's God himself. Look at Psalms 3, verse 1 through 3. A psalm of David, when he fled for Asel and his son, how they increased their trouble me, how they that, many of they that rise up against me, many are saying of me, there is no help for him in God. Saul, Silas, Paul's and common think about that. But you, Lord, Watch this, a shield for me, my glory, and the lift up my head. You, you're the shield, you're the shield. So God is the shield. When you lift up the shield of faith, you're lifting up God. Look at this next scripture as we close. For you, Lord, this is Psalms 5, 12. For you, Lord, will bless the uncompromising righteous, him who is upright and right standing with you. For you, as with a shield, you will surround him with goodness, pleasure, and favor. When you lift up the shield of faith, you can expect goodness, pleasure, and favor. Now, let me give you this last scripture, because God himself is our shield. The Lord is my strength and my, I love this, my impenetrable shield. That means sickness, disease, life. When I lift up the shield, nothing can penetrate it. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Praise God. You are my impenetrable shield, capital S. 
My heart trusts in, relies on, and confidently leans on you. For I am helped, therefore my heart greatly rejoice, and my song will I praise him, and with my song I will praise him. So praise God. I want you to see that the shield of faith is powerful. It's God himself. He's impenetrable to shield. It cannot be penetrated by sickness and disease or negative doctor report. As long as I protect my, my, my words and do not give the, the devil uh, the kindling, which is my tongue, and let him start a fire in me. Praise God. He cannot penetrate your home. He cannot penetrate your church. Praise God. Because when you lift up that shield, you're lifting up God himself. So we love you. We appreciate you. Hope we'll see you soon this Sunday. Get in the live service, 1801 Deep River Road, right here in High Point. Praise God. And so until next week, you know, I love you. God love you. Pray for me and my family as we pray for you.